Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to investigate what happens when aqueous solutions undergo electrolysis. And this is a required practical so you need to learn the details. Now before we start I'd recommend that you watch the two videos on the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Ok so in this practical we're going to carry out electrolysis on two different aqueous solutions and explain the different products formed. The two different solutions are copper 2 chloride and sodium chloride. We're going to start with copper 2 chloride solution. First, we pour approximately 50 cm3 of copper 2 chloride solution into a beaker. We then place a plastic petri dish over the beaker. The petri dish should have two holes. We now insert a carbon graphite rod into each hole, and these are our electrodes. Now, carbon graphite is unreactive, so these electrodes are inert. In other words, the electrodes will not react. One key point is that the two electrodes must not touch each other, as that would produce a short circuit. Next, we attach crocodile leads to the rods, and then connect the rods to the terminals of a low voltage power supply. We now select 4 volts on the power supply and switch it on. Now we need to look very carefully at the two electrodes. If we look at the negative electrode, in other words the cathode, we can see that it's being coated with copper. Remember that if the metal is less reactive than hydrogen, then the metal is discharged at the cathode. Now in this case copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so copper is discharged at the cathode. If we look at the positive electrode, in other words the anode, then we can see bubbles of a gas, and we might notice the smell of chlorine in the air. Now remember that we're electrolyzing copper to chloride, and chloride is a halide ion. Whenever we carry out electrolysis on an aqueous solution containing a halide ion, then the halogen is discharged at the anode. So that means that we're producing chlorine gas at the anode. If we hold a piece of damp blue litmus paper near the anode, then it becomes bleached, and that proves that the gas is chlorine. Ok, so to summarize, if we electrolyze copper to chloride solution, then we get copper discharged at the cathode, and chlorine gas discharged at the anode. Now we're going to repeat the experiment, but this time we're going to electrolyze sodium chloride solution. So here's the apparatus. We've placed approximately 50 cm3 of sodium chloride solution into the beaker. Just like before, we turn on the low voltage power supply and we look at the two electrodes. If we look at the anode first, in other words the positive electrode, we can see bubbles of gas being produced. This gas bleaches damp blue litmus paper, and that tells us that the gas is chlorine. Sodium chloride contains the chloride ion, which is a halide. As we said before, if we carry out electrolysis of a solution containing a halide ion, then the halogen is discharged at the anode. We can also see gas bubbles at the cathode, and this gas is hydrogen. Again, that's because we're electrolyzing sodium chloride solution, and because sodium is more reactive than hydrogen, hydrogen gas is discharged at the cathode. Now we could prove that this gas is hydrogen by collecting it and then testing it with a lit splint. Hydrogen gas produces a squeaky pop. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.